Holding Sky Captain. So welcome to part three of my AVR Arduino Harder Debugger on the Cheap article. Um, since I published the first article, I was I've been investigating further on actually how to use it properly to actually debug an Arduino as a target. The original articles focused on using an ATtiny85 as the target. The main reason was I discovered that my software serial library, my one pin serial library, didn't work reliably at 16 megahertz or actually at the baud rate, 125 kbaud that's necessary uh, to talk to a um, chip running at 16 megahertz. The, if you recall, the baud rate of debug wire is set by the clock rate divided by 128. So in this case, it's 125,000 baud or bits per second. Uh, by making a few tweaks, uh, I'm able to make, get that working more reliably. It was mostly a question of adding some special cases for operating at that speed. Uh, at lower speeds, the, the auto-syncing should still work the way it did before. I also discovered that I'd missed several instructions in the, in the disassembler, mostly because uh, with, the, with the unreliable communications, I was getting bogus opcodes being, being um, spit out that uh, didn't seem to disassemble anything. It turns out they actually were valid opcodes in many cases. I just didn't have, have cases for them. Uh, I've also come up with a new uh, a circuit that you would normally use to drive uh, the, uh, the target being debugged. Let me click that to open it up all the way. Um, in the original version, um, I had VCC connected directly to pin um, D9 to switch the, the VCC on and off, which is a necessary part of the protocol. To, after you flip certain switches, you have to power cycle um, VCC to put the chip in the right mode, either to get in or out of debug mode. In the new version, I've changed that to implement a high side switch, as it's called, with a, a PFET on the top driven by a, a 3904 on the bottom. So effectively does the same thing when when d9 goes high it pulls this transistor low which pulls the gate low on the, on the pfet which lets the power flow through over here i've also added a um a little shunt that you can which which you can actually remove the 10k resistor in some circumstances i'll talk a little bit more about that later why that's necessary i also made a little simple circuit board i'm going to make this available for um uh, for people to order from OSH Park, I haven't updated the page to include the ordering information yet. But um, it's pretty simple to build. You could also wire the circuit up on a, your own perf board or something like that, or on an Arduino shield, uh, like a breadboard shield. Um, if you want to order all the parts for it, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, there are two things I added. This little emulator e EMU socket over here is for a, an upcoming, an, another feature that I'll talk about. So. Um, if you don't need that particular feature, which you won't know if you do or don't want it till later, uh, these these latter two parts on the parts list are not necessary. But I think you may like that feature, and it's only like a couple of bucks more to get those parts. So you might want to just go ahead and order them at the same time. I put in equivalents for both Mauser and, and, and DigiKey for ordering. Some of the parts may be in or out of stock. Um, as the time that I was working on this, I found out that the the CNK switch I used was out of, actually out of stock at Mauser, but is in stock at DigiKey. But by the time you read this or watch this, um, it may have changed. I made this in the form of a mini shield, as I'm calling it. It's designed to plug in onto an Arduino using a subset of the pins, basically shown like this here. And to recap, um, it's got a little switch on there, which is the same as the switch before for switching between um, uh, programming mode and, and debug mode. And this sort of recaps the sequence necessary to switch between those modes. As you recall, um, there's a special fuse called DW Enable that has to be set or you won't be able to use debug mode on the target. Uh, so this, but once um, DWN is set, you can no longer use the ISP protocol to talk to it and set fuses. So this is a recap of the instructions you have to follow to, to get the fuse enabled if you want it to upload new code or how to, how to disable it if you want to get back into the mode where you can upload new code to the, the chip. Uh, in this case, we're just going to be, we're going to, if we're using an Arduino, we're going to continue to use the, the method for um, uploading code via the USB port that most Arduinos have. Um, so one, one caveat is that um, you're going to have to disconnect the, uh, 
the power to the Arduino that you're debugging and, and allow the, the mini shield to supply power to, to the Arduino so that it can actually cycle the VCC power on and off. Um, the, this includes a limit, the little PFET that I use, the ZVP3306A, is limited to about 160 milliampers of source. So you shouldn't try to use it to debug the target Arduino if you've got a lot of stuff hooked up to that target it may draw a significant amount of power. But if you're just using most kinds of typical experimenter circuits, this should work fine. Uh, you can replace that FET with one that sources more current, but um, then you're getting up close to what the um, what the actual controller Arduino is actually going to be able to deliver because you can only get about 500 milliampers to the USB port that drives most Arduinos. So the way you go about um, connecting to another Arduino is most Arduinos have this little connector. Sometimes it's actually filled in with a with the connector. Sometimes it's just bare pins, or, or I mean, sort of bare holes in the circuit board. Um, but that's called an ISP, or sometimes called an ICSP port. And uh, the the um, little breadboard I have has a socket on it right here that allows you to connect a special cable, which is called which is a six pin. ISP to ISP cable. So one one end plugs into the into the mini shield here, and the other one's going to plug into that same spot on the Arduino that you wanted to bug. Um, that will bring actually all of the signals over that it needs to talk to it and, and do it, uh, control it. The only problem is that the way that the Arduino is is set up to run, it has this built-in feature where it has a a 10 nanofarad capacitor hooked up to what's called the DTR line, which is actually um, goes low whenever it's trying to talk, whenever the USB port from the IDE is is trying to send a code across or, or talk to the um, the 18 mega 328P chip that's on, that's on the Arduino. Um, you can't have that capacitor connected because it interferes with using the reset line for the debug protocol. So you actually have to sever that connection. Um, Fortunately, with the um, Arduino Uno, they included a way to do that. There's a little pad that's located about here, which uh, it may move around if there are different revisions of the Arduino Uno. I'm not sure. Um, it's called Reset Enable, if you can see it right there. And it's two pads with a little link between them, a little, a little solder tray. So if you cut that, that's going to disconnect the link right here, and it's going to disconnect the 100 nanofarad capacitor from the reset line and you'll be able to debug. And the only problem is you're going to have to restore that connection before you can upload code again to the Arduino. So you may want to actually come up with a jumper arrangement you can attach here or maybe run wires to this to a little switch on the edge of the board. You can toggle it. You can toggle it back on and off. The other issue is that the circuit, you'll notice here, already has a 10K resistor attached on the Arduino Uno that pulls up to 5 volts. So we don't need the 10K resistor that's on the mini shield that was necessary when using it to talk to an AT Tiny 85. So there's a little jumper, again, on the um, on the board located right here that's labeled PU. And if you, if you remove that jumper, or actually remove the 10K resistor from it. So whenever you're debugging an Arduino, you want to pull that, that jumper out. I recommend putting it back in with only one pin connected so you don't you don't lose it. Um, you can use other types of Arduino boards that are based around the Arduino Uno. I've found so far these particular ones here, the original Arduino Uno 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Adafruit makes a board called the Metro 328, and there's another one called AV Arduino U Plus and Saint Smart Uno you know, R3. All of these seem to have a a place where you can cut the jumper and uh, and and thereby free up the reset line. Um, you can also um, oh I should notice that there are there are a lot of Arduino Uno clones I've seen in places like eBay or from China that sort of look like an Arduino, but I haven't found many of them that actually include the uh, the cuttable jumper. So this doesn't mean you can't use those, but you're going to have to figure out how to how to disconnect that capacitor yourself. You can also use um, the debugger with uh, the Arduino Mini or the Pro Mini, both of which are still based around the 18 mega 328. But you'll have to make a special connection to you have to make a, a connection to those um, necessary pins to program it. 
The other end of the of the cable that plugs into that socket on the mini shield looks like this when viewed from sort of looking down into the pens. And I've labeled the connections there, RST, SCK, MISO, VCC, MOSI, and ground. These connect to the, the equivalent places on the Adreno Mini over here. Fortunately, if you don't have a USB interface plugged in, which is what you use to program a Mini, uh, that actually disconnects the capacitor as well. So you don't need to make any mods to the board to debug an Arduino Mini or, or Pro Mini. Unfortunately, there's no way to use this debug circuit with um, Arduinos like the Leonardo that are based around the 18 Mega 32U4 chip because uh, Atmel, now Microchip, um, switched to using a different scheme for doing debugging on those that use some kind of JTAG-based interface. So please don't attempt to, to use this code with those boards. You'll, you can change the fuses on them back and, back and forth, but I don't even recommend that because I haven't really investigated, I haven't really put in the code um, necessary to make those kind of changes to the board. Um, with the new software that I'm releasing, I've, I've added a, a couple new things to it. I've added a menu that you see when you first um, run up, run the code, and, and and the switch is in the debug position. Now, remember, when the switch is in the in the in the program position, it acts just like a an Arduino ISP to upload upload code to a chip. But in this case, we want to have the switch set in debug mode. When most of the time, we're using it against the target Arduino. Um, also. After you start up the debug mode, I've, there's a menu you can bring up by typing help that now prints out all the all the commands that are available um, for the debug for, for debug mode. They have, it's like printing registers and IO space and SRAM and EEPROM and and flash memory and listing out code and running and setting breakpoints and single stepping and so forth. Um, I'm going to get into a, a demo in a minute. Um, that's basically a quick overview. Inside the code for the sketch, the debug wire debugger programmer sketch, there's a, a defined switch called developer, which you can switch on to get a few more commands, but I don't know if you should really play around with those unless you've spent some time studying the code and really know what they're intended for. They're, they're ones I use during the, the development phase of working on this and give some access to some low-level features that can help sort out some kind of tricky problems. Anyway, I can't scroll down there on this on this screen capture program, but uh, the code you want to get is now available at the, at the bottom of the screen. So here's the new shield that I developed, the mini shield. It's got an 8-pin socket for plugging in an ATtiny 85 and using it like that. This is the ISP connector that plugs into this little cable like this here. They're keyed on one end little notch so there's only one way to put it in there which is one reason I used an actual an actual connector on them. The other end has to connect to a, a two by three set of pins that are not normally keyed so be careful to follow the top edge to the other end of the connector and that's going to be pin one be connected to the other board. There's usually a little spot marked where you're going to plug it in on this particular one here it says ISP down there I think there's a um, a dot or something on that side that indicates that it's pin one on this particular board. Other boards may vary. The markings I've, I've seen are kind of all over the map as to how as to how pin one is indicated. But you need to figure that out so that you can connect the proper end to the board you want to debug. In this case, I'm actually using the red board here as the as the way to as the controller. So I'm going to plug the mini shield in like this, and uh, that. That is what you need to get set up. Then this other end is going to plug into the target. In this case, I'm actually going to use a, um, a US, a, an Arduino Mini. This is a little adapter board that effectively connects those same six pins to the appropriate pins over here. I just made this a while ago for other projects. So by plugging this in here, I'm going to be, I'm going to be connecting it for, for debugging. And that's pretty much the setup we're going to use. Um, I'm not going to show this on screen at the same time because uh, there's really nothing to see. I'm not going to be doing anything that's going to make anything over here happen. Um, I am going to pull out the, the um, connection here. I don't need that for debugging because there's a 10K pull-up resistor on the Arduino Mini as well. And leaving that connected would give me effectively two 10K resistors in parallel, which is above the, 
the spec where it says debug wire can work reliably. Okay, we're just going to quickly go through and uh, debug the hardware setup that we just have uploaded. I'm going to type in F to look at the fuse configuration. And this, the DWN is not enabled at this point, so we have to set it to be able to debug. Notice we're using an 18 mega 328p. That's because we're using an Arduino Mini. Um, so I now have to set the DW enable fuse. You can verify that by typing in F. It's now set. Now we can go into debug mode. Again, it's verified that it's using a 328. It's using a slightly slower version of the baud rate, 124. That's part of the tweaks that I put in there to enable it to talk at 16 megahertz. We should now be able to use all the usual commands like list four zeros and look at our code or look at our registers. Registers. Um, or we can also use FB to disassemble flash it in bytes and see some of the oops F0000 oops FB0000 and now we can step down and look through our flash our, our program space kind of another view of it um, that's the same data you would get from a listing and uh, all the other commands uh, can work, but there's the, the new help command. If you forget what a command is, you can, can type that and, and bring it up. When you're all done, you can type exit. That temporarily turns off debug wire. Now we can type fuse and verify the fuses. The DW enable is still set, but if we type a minus and return, then that's going to disable the fuse, which we can verify by typing F again. And that enables you to switch back and forth between the two different modes. Remember, you're going to have to have to disable the DWN fuse before you can upload any more code to the to the same Arduino that you're using as the target. And also, you want to disconnect from the, the board, and in this case, reconnect the FTDI connector to the upper side so you can upload code to it. And that's the end of my quick overview. Um, if you like this video and the project I'm working on, please give a thumbs up. And please also subscribe to my channel because there's going to be more stuff coming soon related to this and some other examples of how you can do even, fancy, even fancier stuff in the future. Thank you for watching.